Uh, Representative Val Demings, a Democrat of Florida, who uh, she's in the House of Representatives, uh, has, uh, I believe, announced that she is going to be running against Marco Rubio in the upcoming election. She's from Florida. He's from Florida. He's up for re-election. And she has, uh, on her House website, announced this new piece of legislation. It's called the Every Vote Counts Act. The, she said every American should have the opportunity to vote no matter their political affiliation. So, of course, Marco Rubio came out and said, uh, this is the international Marxist conspiracy, right? The international, to let everybody vote. Oh, my God, we can't have that. As, uh, you know, Paul Weyrich said, uh, you know, we don't want everybody to vote. Frankly, our, our leverage in the elections goes up as the voting populace goes down. Well, there's a larger issue here, a larger battle, as, as they say in this. In this. And, and Carl Frisch uh, is uh, the senior advisor to Accountable U.S., which is one of the organizations that is working hard uh, to protect our rights to vote and uh, to and, and, and to tamp down the U.S. Chamber's uh, efforts to uh, to kneecap our rights to vote. Accountable.us is the website. Carl, our old buddy, uh, you can find him on Twitter at Carl Frisch, F-R-I-S-C-H. Carl, welcome back. Tell us about this. Well, you know, the Chamber of Commerce is actively lobbying against the right to vote uh, for millions of Americans in our U.S. Congress. They are, uh, for, for their own naked political ambition, they are uh, opposing the For the People Act. Um, and I think we would all agree that what we should be doing is working together to increase access to the ballot, to increase the likelihood that Americans will be able to cast their ballots when we have elections. Unfortunately, the Chamber of Commerce, which is powered by the money it gets, from corporations um, is doing the exact opposite. They're, they're trying to stop action in Congress from protecting our rights to vote, and they're doing nothing to stop the efforts in state after state controlled by conservative lawmakers to roll back the right to vote for particularly communities of color. So, Carl, what am I missing here? The, the, the Chamber of Commerce was originally put together as basically a, a, a group of businesses to advocate for the interests of businesses. If I'm Target or uh, Walmart or AT&T or, you know, fill in the blanks, and, and you can identify some of the companies that you've specifically pointed to. Um, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the list right in front of me. Um, but if I'm one of these big companies, what does it matter to me whether black people can vote? Well, it matters a great deal. Your employees, your family members, uh, these are the people that we're talking about. Uh, your customers, your consumers, these are the people that are being denied a right to vote. And these companies know that. That's why companies like Microsoft and Target and Salesforce and hundreds of others ran an ad in the New York Times saying that they would do everything they can to stand against discriminatory efforts to restrict the right to vote in this country. That's what they said. And what do they do? What do they do, right? They say one thing out of one side of their mouth and out of the other, they are paying the Chamber of Commerce, which is actively leading the fight against voting protections in this country. So we are calling them out. Uh, we're making sure that people know that these companies are saying one thing and doing another. But they can stop that right now. All they have to do is drop the chamber. They can give up their memberships in the chamber. I don't know why they would want to remain members of the chamber if they are so diametrically opposed uh, on issues as important as the right to vote. So to uh, to answer what sounded like perhaps a hypothetical question, but I'm going to take it as literal. Uh, you don't know why they would want to do this. Um, these corporations uh, are, are generally fighting one particular type of effort at the level of government. Uh, the polluting corporations don't want union workforces, and they also want to continue the right to pollute. The thieving corporations like, you know, uh, for example, you know, Wells Fargo opening accounts for people without even telling them and, and charging them and stuff like that. You know, the, the thieving corporations don't want to be regulated. The, uh, the and, and, you know, basically they and, and there's only one political party that's on the side of letting corporations pollute more and steal more. And that's the Republican Party. And the Republican Party only gets to stay in power if the majority of Americans, you know, or if a, a significant slice of Americans find it very, very difficult to vote. So I can see 
where if I'm running a giant corporation and or say I'm Amazon and I don't want my union I don't want my workforce unionized so I don't want you know the pro act to pass I don't want legislation passing that makes it easier to unionize or if I'm running you know Coke Industries or Exxon Mobil and and I don't want the government saying that I'm going to have to start paying a damn carbon tax uh, and clean up my pollution um, that I'm going to do everything that I can to keep Republicans in office and screw Democrats which is exactly what the chamber has been doing what's wrong with that logic. Well, and they have a long history of doing it, too. Here's the problem with the logic. These companies have stated that their values are the exact opposite uh, of that when it comes to voter uh, disenfranchisement. So when companies like Target or Salesforce or Microsoft tell the American people and hundreds of others just like them, these chamber member companies, when they tell the American people, look, we stand for the right to vote and we will do whatever we can to stop these kinds of things. And at the same time, they are bankrolling an organization that stands uh, opposed to that, that is leading the charge against voting rights in this country, the American people need to know about it. Yep. And, you know, we think that these companies can do the right thing. They can align their membership in these organizations with their values. All they have to do is drop their chamber memberships. It's as easy as that. And people can learn more about that effort at dropthechamber.org. We're running television ads in uh, states where these companies are housed to make sure that their employees know that this is going on. You know, you get a high profile push from the media when you run an ad in the New York Times telling people um, that you are with them, that you stand aligned with their values. But they need to know as well that they don't actually stand for these values when they are actively supporting the Chamber of Commerce in doing what it is doing. And it is a long history of voter suppression and voter disenfranchisement uh, at the Chamber of Commerce. This is not a new phenomenon. They've been doing it for decades. Yeah. And so what you're arguing is that corporations should go back to uh, basically the way corporate behavior generally was played out. There were obvious exceptions like uh, IT&T, you know, overthrowing the Allende uh, government. But um, it, going back to where corporations were in the 50s, maybe, or the 60s, you know, pre, uh, really before the uh, Buckley and Bellotti decisions in the 70s that allowed corporations to, to own politicians, going back to basically focusing just on business, instead of uh you know getting sucked up into all all of this stuff and and i think they should get sucked up into this stuff uh, the american people need to know that these companies uh stand and re you know represent their values but okay. they also need to know when they when they uh when they're it. lying about it yeah so it, it seems that the two places you know number one public shaming which you guys are doing uh, number two, uh, employees, employee activism within companies. Number three, shareholder activism. Those, those seem to be the three kind of battlefields uh, to get corporations to behave appropriately relative to, say, shall we say, democracy. Am I missing anything? No, I think that's a good equation. Um, you know, one thing I would add is that every person listening to this show or watching the show around the country can be a part of all of that. Uh, you know, they, you know, log on to Twitter and tweet at the company. Let them know that you don't believe um, that they should be doing this, that they should be standing with uh, the American people and the right to vote, that they shouldn't be funding the Chamber of Commerce to undermine that effort. Uh, this is a battle for the future of our democracy and for Target and Salesforce and Microsoft and hundreds of other companies uh, to be on the wrong side of that battle. They deserve to be called out by, by their consumers. So what's the website again, Carl? Dropthechamber.org. Dropthechamber.org.